This video is sponsored by Treasure by EDAF. Link below and stay till the end to find out a discount code. Hello everyone, Telltale here. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex made for the Xbox original, the PS2 and the GameCube in 2001 and 2002. I'm going to be specifically looking at the Xbox version, seeing as that's the simplest version that I could look at. This video was extremely rushed as I just wanted to get a last video out for the year and I felt that Wrath of Cortex is a great way to end it off. As not only is it used to be my favourite game of all time, it's still in the top 10 and I have a lot to say about it. How's about we just get right in? Story-wise, it's quite bland, however. This is probably the weakest part of the game. Crash is enjoying a little holiday after Crash Bandicoot Team Racing, I guess. But you could say that this takes place after Warped. I don't know if Team Racing is canon, personally. I do believe that it is, but uh, there's a lot of mixed... The signals going through the community with that one. But taking a little break when all of a sudden Uka Uka releases the four elementals with Cortex and uses it to power another bandicoot called Crunch. Now Crash and Coco, yes, I'll get on to that, have to go and stop Crunch and Cortex. It's very, very poor, but it's an average Crash story, so you can't say much, can you? Graphical wise for the Xbox original in 2002 is not bad. The fur textures actually look alright and they work fairly well for the style of the game. It's the assets on the backgrounds and the levels in itself that don't do it for me. They're quite gritty and quite very poor and Cortex's face. Ugh. Heck, most of the enemies' faces. If it ain't Crash. Cortex, Uka Uka or Aku Aku, they didn't put much effort into it. Even Crunch looks a bit half-assed at this point. Also, they used a lot of 2D textures in areas, which I don't agree with. You see, you... you Mario 64 did it, right? But Mario 64 did it because it was a game from 1996. This was five years later, and they used it again. On high-quality consoles that could actually support 3D models of trees. Yet you still decided to go for that. Worst looking model has to be Entropy, which you can see right now is quite ugly. Uh, don't speak again. Overall, the graphics are 50 50 split. I'd say meh. Soundtrack wise, it's actually pretty well made. It's very misplaced, however. I don't think that this is the um, crash soundtrack this is more of a mix of several different games you'd find this is all like smash bros or a gaming compilation album it's not crash specific and it feels very odd to listen to in a crash game and the um another thing to talk about is the levels they are all well designed and they all while they look gritty have a specific tone to each one whether it be going through the tundras, or being in icy worlds, or going through deserts, going through castles, going through caves to end up on secret machinery labs. They're all interesting and very unique environments, you could say. One of my um, pet peeves, and one of many pet peeves, is the amount of vehicles. This brings down the game tremendously. It isn't great, the amount of levels. Out of the entire level of 25 levels, yes, 25, around 19 levels are actually vehicle based or have a vehicle in them. They may not surround about vehicles, but there's vehicles in them that take up at least half of the stage. Water levels are bad for them. If you aren't swimming in the water levels, you're using mechs in water levels. The mechs do not control well in the environments they are in, and it doesn't work. But they put it in anyway, just because it was a quick way and an easy way to get all the power they could and all the space filled on that disc. 
it's not good it doesn't work stop it with the vehicles it has more than crash 3 and crash 3 was already complained about for how many you know they had all bikes and they had cars this game lets you control coco as well and that's one thing I'm going to get on into a minute, controls, but they let you control Coco. There's two or three platforming levels compared to loads of different vehicle levels with her. You're going past tsunamis, earthquakes, all this, that, and you have to ride your scooter. Oh yeah, and there's also minecart levels. The minecart levels literally make you sit there and watch the bandicoot drive by. You don't do anything but lean to the sides. And you don't even need to do that in one of the levels. And you still win. You don't have to press a button on many of them. Oh boy, it's not fun. The amount of vehicles actually drowns out the actual main point of the game. Being your platformer frontmost. Controls... Um, normal game-wise, platforming, it actually works alright. There are actually decent controls and nice feeling, especially when you play on the 360, which I used for this game, because it was the easiest way to get footage, and it feels quite well. Even on the GameCube as well, it feels okay, but on the PS2, because of how much of a struggle it was to get it to run apparently it, w it didn't work too well I should know I have played that version with my family and we found it a bit miffed on the controls but that doesn't stack up to the controls for the actual mechs and all of the vehicles you ride which control poorly they don't control well and there's so many different ones that all the controls can clash and you don't feel a simple way of playing it. You'll go from riding in a buggy to going into a minecart where there's two different control styles for one same type of vehicle. And there's a mine in the mine levels as well. Occasionally you'll have the pushy carts which control different to anything else. You don't turn, you're in a 2D path. Climbing on monkey bars as well, they don't control too well and it, it doesn't work the controls are poor, the graphics are good and the music are good, but the controls are poor and the amount of vehicles are shocking. <sighs> this used to be my favourite game for a long time, but I've seen a new view of it and I have to lower the score that I wanted to give it. I wanted to give it an 8, but 6.5 is the best I can give it. I don't really think that there's much else I can say about the game. Thanks for watching season two. Today's sponsor is Treasure, producing multiple amazing items like rugby jerseys, beanies, jackets, and clothing. And for a special limited time during their special offer, you can get 15% off by using the link in the description and on screen now, it is www.treasurebyedafs.com forward slash discount forward slash telltales promo. Get 15% off of your order. That is great. The link is in the description, and if you do buy now, it will support them as they're a small one man show. It's an off sale price and it's active as soon as this video has gone up, so get to it right now. Thanks so much for sponsoring this video, video treasure.